Here I have the control column. I'm pre-fitting it onto this bulkhead. This is the rear bulkhead of the center section. As per the plans, they want you to pre-fit this. Not really sure why. Maybe it's easier to do now than when it's in the airplane. But I've got the mounting brackets in place. I've got them cut down as per the plans to make them lighter. And I've got the column in. Now, I had a little bit of difficulty with it just because there was some alignment issues between this little bracket that's welded on and this bracket that's welded on. And you've got a bolt that has to go through all of that on both sides. And I'm not sure which one. I think it's this one. There is a little bit of an alignment issue between the hole in this bracket and the hole in this bracket. And when it pivots, it's going to be hard to see, I think, but when it pivots, there's a little bit of movement. It, it, it almost looks like the bolt's bent, but it's not. It, there's just a misalignment between these two brackets, and when you rotate the column, you can see the bolt kind of move around. It's tight. It's not moving because it's loose. It's, it's just because these two holes are misaligned, and it's kind of in there at an angle. So when you rotate the column, you see that movement. And it, it caused a little bit of binding. Um, so I had to, I made this hole just a little bit bigger on both of these, and I did the same on these two. And then um, when you fit the washers in here to get your spacing, I actually had to take a washer on this side and a washer on this side and um, sand them down a little bit to make them thinner. But the way that I did my alignment, I used this hole. I used this hole as a guide and I just dropped the, the arm down and I tried to get the arm between the brackets as close to center on this hole as I can get it. Now this is a welded assembly, it's out of my control, it's probably not 100% perfect, but the f I have it moved to the left as far as I can. I have a thin washer in here for the bearing to ride on, so this, this bracket is over as far as I can get it. And you can see it's not quite centered over the hole, it could go to the left a little bit more, but I don't want to take this thin washer out of here. So that's as good as it's going to get. So then I just went ahead and, and basically took up the gaps, if you will, using other washers in here. And like the plans say, you don't want to get it too tight because it will bind. Um, but you can see this one moves freely. It gets a little tight toward the bottom. You can see that there. But it's minimal as I bring it up and that there's no play. So I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to move on. They have you fit the control sticks next. These control bases get fitted onto here next. Again, I'm not sure why. It's probably just easier to do here than later on in the airplane. So that's next. Oh, and just like I did on the wings, I made a note. I drew out a picture dictating the washer uh, places, the placement of the washers for each bracket. Now these are just sticky notes that I have on this on the bulkhead here as I was working with this. But now that I've got this figured out, I'm going to transfer this information onto the actual plans for this setup here so that I won't lose them and I'll always have them. Alright, let me move on to the control sticks. Okay, I am going to cover how I fit these control columns or these control stick bases to the control column on the rear center bulkhead. This one is already complete and it came out pretty much, sorry about the camera work, pretty much the way that I wanted it. So I'm going to walk through doing this one step by step. Now again, this is how I like to do it. Everybody's different, so uh, here we go. So I've already, obviously I've got the control column mounted 
to the base which is mounted to the bulkhead and this has already been talked about in the other video but it's free to move and there's no play moving on to the control sticks the first thing that I do since these are powder coated parts the holes need to be cleaned out so I run a uh, quarter inch drill bit down through here and basically just match drill these holes and clean them out so that the bolt fits in the way that it should. Okay. After that, of course, I deburr. Now, deburring inside here can be a little tedious. What I like to use is one of these countersinks and I just come up in here by hand and deburr these two holes. And I use my regular deburr to, to deburr the outside. So that's the very first step. Get these nice and clean and make sure that the bolt fits. The second thing is to fit your copper bushing into here. Now on both sides, this side and the other side, these were too long. This one's already been cut down a little bit, but it's not the final size. So you want to cut this down to fit inside here. Now, you want this to fit snug in theory. And I'll explain that in a minute. You want this to fit snug because when you put your bolt on here and you tighten this bolt, you want it to pinch this. So this will not move. However, I've noticed that in my other video I talked about this control column having a little bit of a bind in one extreme direction. I found out that this leg here was bent a little bit and it was putting a lot of stress on this joint. And when I would tighten down these bolts here and here, it would make this bind. And I found out that if I take this and I unbent it, it immediately relieved the stress in here. Even with these bolts nice and tight, this moved very freely. So my point is if you make this too short and you get your bolt on here and you really pinch this down, it's going to flex these arms here, which is going to affect your pivot across here and is going to cause binding. So again, when you get your column in, make sure that it's free to move, but you want these bolts tight because you want the bearing in here to be the pivot. You don't want to pivot on the bolt. Once that's done, be very careful not to pinch these because it's going to screw up this joint across here if these bend. So you want this to fit in here nice and snug. So when you pinch this, everything is still free to move and this will not rotate. Now you can see mine does not fit in here snugly. The reason for that is I like to use washers on both sides of my joint like this on both ends just because rather than having this part rubbing on this part I'd rather have it rubbing on a washer. Plus it gives me a little bit of room in here I can shim it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to set this camera up on a tripod I think and I'm going to start to shave this down making this short so that it will fit in here with a washer on both ends and it will fit in here without uh, basically a slip fit. I don't, I don't want a lot of play because I want to be able to clamp this down. This gets clamped to this, so this will not move. And then your control column base will pivot around this. So let me get this set up and I'll do that. So I've got my bushing cut to size. First thing that I want to do real quick is clean this surface where the bushing is going to rest and the washer. So I just want to wipe this down a little bit. When I uh, I come back trial and error fitting this, these get a little scraped and a little dirty so you want to make sure they're clean when you do your final fit. The other thing that you want to do with this bushing is you want to make sure that the bolt will fit in it. So what I do is I'll put this in a vise with some um, um, 
what I want to say, the, the jaw liners so that this doesn't get damaged. Clamp this in a vise, drill through it with a drill, a quarter inch drill. You want to use cutting fluid on the drill bit and you want to use a high speed and a very slow feed so that it doesn't bind and it doesn't catch. This is very soft material and it will gum up so use uh, cutting fluid and clean the chips out as you go. This will get very hot so once you're done boring it through be very careful with it because it is extremely hot. So once you have it set up deburred so that your bolt fits Again, you've already got these holes deburred, drilled to size so that the bolt fits. And with trial and error, I've been cutting this down smaller and smaller to fit in here with two thin washers. So now I'm going to do my final fit. I'm going to fit the washer on top and guide it in here. Run my bolt through. I can get everything in alignment. So there's the bolt all the way through. And you can see there's still play here because I have to fit the bottom washer. Now at this point, when you're fitting this, what I like to do is I have, I have it in place like you see here and then I'll pull up on this and then I'll try to fit the washer underneath it. And if it's too long, the washer won't fit. You have to take it back out and grind it down a little bit bring it back, put it back in here, pull it up, and see if you can get the washer to slide underneath it. This washer now slides underneath it. So let me get the bolt out of the way, and then I'll try to slide the washer underneath without binding anything. Something like that and then see if I can get it to align with the bolt. As you see the bolt goes back through. And now, there's hardly any play in here at all, which is what you want. You can still see it's a little bit free, but there's no play. Now when I put the nut on and I pinch this, it's hardly gonna move at all. So this alignment through the pivot point won't be disturbed because this is not going to pinch down hardly at all because the tolerance in here is so close. So that's finished. Now the next step is to fit the control arm to here. Now this needs to be ever so slightly smaller than the length of the bushing because you want this to clamp the bushing so the bushing stays stationary and then you want this to pivot around the bushing. So you need a little bit of clearance here on these ends so that this is free to move. So I'm going to do that next. I'm going to take this back out. I got to stop pinching those washers. Okay. So this is back out and now I have to fit this in here with the washers and I'll do that the same way. I'll start out with a washer on top. I'll try not to kick the camera. And you'll notice I'm not using the bushing. I'm just fitting this control arm or this control arm base. Where's the washer? I use a little screwdriver sometimes just to come in here and, and help get things in alignment. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so I've got my washer on top. I'm gonna drop the bolt through. I'm gonna pull this up. Now this has got a lot of play in it because it doesn't have the bushing in it. So you wanna make sure that when you, when you go to slide your washer in here that you move this around a little bit just to make sure that nothing gets bound. See, now this washer won't fit underneath there. So now I have to take this and I have to start grinding these down. And I'll show you how I do that here in a moment. This is my setup for the, uh, 
for the bearings or the bushings, I just use my combination disc sander, belt sander, and I use my, my guide, make sure that it's 90 degrees, and then I just lay the bushing on here up against the fence and run it along the disc. And then I'll bring it up here, and this is a finer grit sandpaper than the disc. I'll bring it up here just to deburr the edge. I won't run it on here because there's no way for me to be sure that it stays flat. I do it here to make sure that this face is nice and flat and square to the length of the bushing. And then I'll just bring it up here and, and kiss the edges to deburr it. And then I'll use the regular um, deburring tool to deburr the inside of the hole. So that's how I do the bushings. Now the control arm bases are a little different. I use my belt sander and I basically just balance as best I can this on here and grind down the ends of the tubing where the bushing resides. It's a little tedious but you'll get the hang of it with some practice. You'll learn to take some off and then look at it from various angles and you can see kind of if it's not straight, if it's got, if it's cut at an angle and then you just work it until you get it fairly flat and straight and keep working it down on both sides until you get, um, until you get it to fit the way you want it with the washers and I'll go back to that here in a moment. So I've been fitting this base in here and so far it's coming along really well. Again when you grind these there it's a little tedious because of the shape of these but when you grind them you want to try to keep these ends flat and parallel to one another. It's very difficult to do. Um, they don't have to be perfect as long as they're close. This obviously doesn't spin. It doesn't rotate 360 degrees. It, it only moves a few degrees in either direction. So if these are not perfectly flat and perfectly parallel, it's okay. Try to get them close. So now, as I had done with the bushing, let me fit this. Again, I'm fitting this without the bushing. I've got my washer on top. Drop the bolt all the way through, and then I'll pull this up toward the top, and then slide the bushing underneath. And the bushing does want to go, I mean the washer does want to slip inside underneath there, so let me get the bolt out of the way. And again, there's a lot of slop on this, so you want to make sure that you don't pinch, see all the this the slop in here. You want to make sure that you don't pinch the, the washer and think that you need to grind more material off. You may not have to. It's just a matter of moving it around so it doesn't bind. So now I've got the washer in and the bolt. Now of course there's a lot of play in here because the bearing, the bushing's not in, but the up and down movement is minimal. So now I'm going to fit this with the bushing and put the nut on here and pinch this. And if this binds, then this is clamping onto this part and it is not clamping on to the bushing. So at that point I want to take this back off and grind this down ever so slightly so that when this is tight it's pinching the bushing and this is free to move. So let me do that. Now I've been grinding this. I've been grinding this piece without cleaning up the edges. So I don't think this is going to fit in here until I get this, until I get these deburred. So let me go deburr these, drop this in, and we'll fit the whole assembly and see what we come up with. So the bushing had a little bit of a burr on the end of it. So you can see now it, it fits in here nice. 
All right, so I got that. Let me get my washer. I have the top washer on. And slide this assembly in. Drop that all the way down like that. It still moves freely. Now I've got to get this part and the bushing up out of the way so I can slide this washer underneath. Now it fits underneath here, but I got to get the bushing out of the way. bolt out of the way. Are you going to let me get in there or not? It's hung up on the bear or the bushing, I think. I don't know how to get that out of there. There we go. All right, so I got it underneath the bushing now, and I'll just work it in place. Try to get the bolt back down. There. All right, so that's all in place. This still moves freely, and it's got a little bit of a bind right there, but I mean, that's just, that's very nitpicky. But I don't have anything tight. So I have a feeling when I clamp this down, this is gonna bind. Let's see, where's my hardware? Here we go. So a fat washer and a castle nut. All right, I'm going to put my magnifying glasses on so I can see the hole in the, uh, the bolt in the castle nut. So that, I just, ran that down hand tight and it's pretty much in line with the hole for the cotter pin and this has got a little bit of a bind to it and like I said that's not even really hand tight at this point but it doesn't need to be tight it just needs to hold this assembly together so I can actually run my cotter pin in here just momentarily. I don't want to run it all the way through yet because I'm not ready to do an install, but that's in. And this, you can see, moves relatively freely. And there's, there's very little play. So I think I'm going to go with that. You can see that the bolt is not spinning. So this control base is pivoting on the, um, the bushing, which is, which is what you want. And another thing, before I forget, this arm or this base has the control stick that slides into it. Before you permanently attach this, you want to make sure that you clean this out so that will fit in here nicely. And I did the same on this one. I don't know if this is in camera view or not, but the other, let me see. Oh yes, it is. On this stick here, I, I deburred the inside diameter of this hole for whatever control um, grip is gonna go on here. Because eventually this whole assembly is gonna be in the airplane. Once it's in the airplane, if you start deburring these ends here, that debris is gonna run down the tube come out the bottom and end up in the bottom of your airplane somewhere. So just clean everything now. Get everything deburred, get everything clean, greased, so that when this assembly is in the airplane, you don't have to make that mess with everything in place. Do it now on the bench where it's easy to clean. So I'm going to keep this as is. Um, another thing too that I like about having a washer on each end 
you have this part, this welded part here that comes back where the bolt is and you have these ears that kind of stick out. Without the washers, if you don't grind these ends square, these little ears as this rotates can rub on this part here, top and bottom. With the washers, that gives you some space between this part here and this part of the column here. Gives you a little bit of space so there's no binding. So I'm going to go with that. Um, I may fool around with it a little bit more. I'd like to have this. I don't want to be able to turn this by hand. It's okay now, but with it under load, this bolt may end up turning. And I don't want that. I don't want to be able to turn this by hand. So what I might do is take this back apart and grind down this part a little bit more so I can pinch this. I can spin my castle nut over to the next hole, which will tighten this down just a little bit and still allow this to move and the bolt should not rotate. So that's what I'm going to do, but that's the essence of fitting this and again, it's just my method of doing it and I think it works out well. Of course, when you get it all finished, take everything apart, clean everything really well, and then uh, put some your favorite grease lubricant on the outside of the bearing, outside of the bushing. Don't grease the inside because you don't want the bolt to, to turn. Just grease the outside of the bushing and then uh, fit it back into your base. Make sure everything's nice and clean and you're all set. So to wrap up real quick, I got this fitted back together. Everything's been cleaned really well. Everything's been deburred and um, everything fits. Like I said, I recommend drilling, deburring, cleaning everything on this assembly because the instructions say that you fit this as is. And then you can remove this as an assembly. Just take these bolts out here. These brackets stay with the bulkhead. The rest of this comes apart as a unit. So in theory, these should not have to come off again. So again, you want to make sure that you deburr this inside diameter so that the stick can fit in. You want to clean this inside diameter for your grip at some point because like I said, you want to try to keep the mess to a minimum when this is actually in the airplane. So clean, deburr, grease, fit everything now. And then um, that's it. So here's the end that I was working on and I did take this back off and I sanded the one end down here just a little bit to give this a little bit more clearance. When I did that, I was able to come back and get another, um, actually I think I may have, yeah, I've got, I tightened it one full hole. So now this bolt is nice and tight. It, it won't turn on its own. And um, this rotates really freely now. And there's no, there's virtually no play in here at all. And this, because I didn't change the length of the bushing, this pinched the bushing and it hardly moved at all. So this pivot point here did not get compromised. And this, this moves really free now. So this is finished and it's uh, time to move on, which I'm sure you're glad to hear.